Genie grind and watch him get a rich, huh? Remember when I said I hit a lick, huh? I don't really wanna fuck the bitch, what? Willie went and made another hit, okay? Like Prada on my motherfucking kid, huh? Louis on my motherfucking hip, huh? Curry how I dunk, no switch, hey, fucker gonna fuck that bitch, hey, if you ain't gonna fuck with me, you a dumb fuck, uh? Put up a hit up, I feel like one punch, uh? Look at my bank and I'm getting dumb rich, uh? And I'm gonna count it up till a hundred, uh? Hello world, I'm What If Studia, and today we are doing What If Deku was raised by Arceus. Um, or raised by Pokemon. Uh, realistically, he's going to have the same exact thing. Uh, and those who are still even watching, thank you for sticking around. So, today Deku gets into a fight with Bakugo. Well... It's not like he wanted one anyways. Bakugo beats the ever-living shit out of Deku. This time it's serious. After all, Deku's repeated attempts to make Bakugo feel uh, inferior, sort of. That's how Bakugo sees it at this point. Bakugo lets out all of his rage. One that would shatter the rest of his life's rage. At this point, he was at his most mad and released every single ounce of rage that he could have. Blasting Deku past it um, onto the ground, and then he kicks him in the stomach. Deku, only being seven, however, ro just simply curls up into a ball. He doesn't move. He doesn't say anything. He only says he's sorry for whatever he did. He doesn't know. What he did. How could he? He's but a child. Bakugo says, I'm not looking for a sorry. I'm looking for the respect. As then he just punts Deku's stomach and throws him down the hill. As Deku continues rolling and rolling and rolling, as Bakugo actually kind of gets nervous at this time. Isn't he going to as then he hits his head against one of the trees, falling down into the river. As Bakugo says, oh shit. I think I might have killed him. <laughs> as the, his two little goons come up next to him saying, where, where did Deku go? As Bakugo says, nowhere. He, he left. They're like, what? Didn't you kick his ass? Yes. I kicked his ass so hard he evaporated. They're like, yo, no way. Cool, bro. It's like, high five or some shit, however they do. Deku floats downstream slowly, staring up at the sky as his, eye, his eyesight comes back to him, but only for a short while. All he can see streaming throughout the skies are clouds in the shape of a godly form, a heavenly pure form a god I guess this is where I die as he closes his eyes for one last time he opens them back up to find himself in a field a true god in the skies once more the same skies that once he had died this that it peers down to see animals stroking across the fields streaking across the fields different Pokemon of all different breeds running around frolicking even he didn't know what these animals were nor did he know where he was he only knew that this must be the afterlife he was told about <laughs> he smiles a little bit as he he's like thank god there was one I don't know what I would have done without one as then a gi uh, ginormous, uh, you know, obelisk of a freaking Pokemon walks next to him and sits down as it, as it shakes the ground just by sitting. It was this heavenly form, the god that he saw up in the sky. It was Dialga, the god of the underworld. It was, it's in its misty form, however, as he could see straight through it. Even as he learns that even the, the, you know, evil Dialga, of which he was told later, was completely evil, had shown a sense of purity when 
he met something that he could not comprehend himself, Dialga would only stare at Deku, not speak. As Deku was slightly afraid of this, he walks down the meadow to find a tempig that was, uh, and a meowth playing. As he tries to talk to them, both of them sort of look at him strangely, as then the meowth runs around him, and then uh, just says meowth. No actual human response. Deku is unable to really understand r what they're saying. However, he gets a sense of direction just as he looks back up. The Meowth uh, points in a direction he did not expect. All the forest and trees start to clear as he walks in that same direction. The Tempig and the Meowth continue playing his, around him. As then he meets a, uh, he meets a lake. He says, well, what now? As then a Gyarados rises to the surface. The Gyarados, first hesitant and also uh, confused at why a human would be here, uh, uh, Me Meowth hands out, um, puts out his hand as Deku does the same as he puts his hand onto the Gyarados' head as the Gyarados closes its eyes and then opens them back up and lets Deku walk onto its back. As Gyarados run um streams across the water a lapras comes next to them racing at the same exact speed and they start a race between the gyarados and the lapras gyarados of course wins because of its absolute size however deku does get splashed in the in the meanwhile as the meowth came and the tepig st stayed behind once they had reached land he rubs the back of the gyarados thanking him for safe travel and also says goodbye to the gyarados as then they walk a few more miles, coursing throughout all the, the, tr the different uh, environments, even the cold ones, meet, uh, meeting uh, delicate Glacias, as he also meets an Arti Articuno. Many different legendary Pokemon uh, meet him along his journey, as he starts to learn each of their names from them saying it. He gets to learn almost half the animal. Uh, um, Pokemon in the whole entire Pokedex, however, that was never invented. Finally, they reach their destination, a spire that reaches up to the skies themselves. It was it was a uh, pearl white. It was a gigantic spire made of pure white pearl white uh, marble. As he enters into the gigantic doors, the Meowth stays behind, holding up his paw as that was his way of greeting him and saying goodbye as he holds up his hand too and then walks into the gigantic room the courtroom almost however the you know the gigantic uh seat in the middle of the whole courtroom was held by N uh, arceus himself as arceus brings himself to his feet human i see you have come what do you have for me? You have come on quite a long way, after all. I'd see it would be a shame if you came here just to see me. <laughs> oh, refreshments! As you know, <laughs> like a like a Squirtle comes out at, with like a little dining little table thingy. As then he squirts water into it, and he's like, "Is this sanitary?" Squirtle squirts like squirt. I, I don't. I don't know if he said yes or no. He said yes. Thank you, Arceus. Uh, it's so cool to meet a, a Pokemon that can speak po human language. Well, I know all languages, you see. Now, Deku, what is it exactly that you wish to gain from being here? Oh, I had almost forgot it had been so long to come here. It, it, this place may be majestic, uh, Arceus. But my home, my mother, my friends, they all wor will worry about me the longer I stay here. Deku, why would you want to return? Bakugo and all the rest, they... I wouldn't want to say it, but they don't want you. Haven't you gotten a message from him? You help him, and, and yet he forces you away. Why would you continue to help him? Because I, I know he needs it. 
I know he's hurting on the inside just like me. I know he hurts the same way I do. Ah, I see. Is that because of not having a quirk? You know of, of my world? Yes, very much so. Wow, that's that's incredible. Deku speaking normally because he feels the mo um so, uh, a sort of sense of calm and you know friendliness with Arceus, even though he had never met him before. Or her, I guess. I think it's more of a her. Yeah. Uh, Arceus says. If that is what you wish, I guess there's not much I can do. Although my partner and, you know, arch enemy, Dialga, needs to be here to send you back to your world. However, I can do it myself, but it will be taxing. Th thank you, thank you. Don't thank me just yet. It'll be even a longer journey to get back to your home, and it will be full of con uh, of conflict and and you know just general you know blood and gore are you sure that you want to return to that desolate reality and not stay in this wholesome one deku takes a minute and then looks up to her and, and says well perhaps you can help me help you child how would you suppose so uh, well, I don't really know. Maybe you could be a fa my father. <laughs> Child, that would never work. I I'm not meant to live in your reality. You see, if I live in your reality, I don't get a choice of what I am. I am simply shot into it. I cannot control dimensions. That is one of my other brothers. However... All I can do is put you back there. Are you sure? I will only ask this one more time. Yes. Yes, Arceus. Uh, I'm sure. Well, all right. As all the Pokemon that he had met along the way uh, start flooding in as this was sort of... As Arceus kind of teleported them there. Uh, Ar uh, Arceus then has Deku go into the middle of the spire the top floor of it, as all the Pokemon stood on top of the top floor and overlooked his whole journey. He almost felt sorrow for leaving them behind. He wishes he could bring every single part of them with him, every single one of them. As he, you know, takes his time to hug every single 500 of them, you know, uh, he says, thank you for being there for me. I wish I could take you along. How much it breaks me, breaks my heart to go back. How much I would love to go back. It hurts just as much to leave you guys behind. As this gives Arceus an idea. Perhaps there is something I can do. What do you mean? Meowth? You can talk? Why didn't you know? No, I didn't. When I, when I talked to you before, didn't you didn't talk? Uh, what are you talking about, kid? You didn't say anything. You didn't ask me to talk. Oh, so this whole entire time you were just not talking? My vocal cords hurt. Right. Anyways, guys. Oh, right. Arceus. Sorry. Ah, uh, Meowth. What am I going to do with you? Anyways, I can bring along the Pokemon, too. It will be harder. However, I feel like they do want out of this perfect, uh, perfect, you know, dimension that I've created. It's too perfect. They want out. They want a new dimension. After all, they've been here for 5,000 years. 5,000? I know. It's been tiring. I, I see. Shall we go then? You got it, buddy. I'd love to come along too. As he hops onto Deku's shoulder, he's like, "Ew, the, 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 the cat hair on me." Ew. <laughs> he like he like struggles to get uh, Meowth off. As then Arceus starts to teleport them, he's like, "Wait, no, Meowth, get off, get off." <laughs> as then 
Meowth's like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> and then he like grabs on, he like starts to stick onto his roughed up shirt <laughs> and like stick his nails into it. He's like, ah! <laughs> and they fight for a little second as then Arceus teleports them back to Earth. And he can hear Arceus talk to herself. Wait a minute. Do I have enough uh, uh, power to take myself back? Oh no. <laughs> and Deku's like, what is it, Arceus? I might be staying for a little while. As then, Deku is teleported all the way back to where he was, floating down that river. He finds himself on the bank, coughing up um, some water as he pulls himself back up to the bank of the shore. He picks himself back up and dusts off uh, the water. He hangs up his shirt, um, his shirts and, uh, and, you know, uh, freaking shorts as he had taken a long journey and learned a lot of survival skills. He has learned bi general, just everything about survival and, you know, learning in a world of Pokemon too. So, you know, it's quite potent when it comes to this world because this world is not like his own that one that he was in. He lived in it for almost four years, as his journey was quite long and arduous. Um, Deku is now living outside in the, in, the, in the wilderness, and as he hangs up all of his clothes and, get, and straps on, um, starts weaving his new clothes, putting them on that he had made himself from the wheat that someone had farmed around, his, uh, around the forest that he now lived in. Deku takes a new breath of air as he walks out into the wilderness. From what a deer he should have seen. A deerling. It looks slightly different than a deer. A deerling? No way. As he takes a look around, he sees, uh, he finally takes his first look into the real world that he was teleported into. This world had uh, now grown Pokemon. Apparently this whole world was filled with Pokemon. All the wildlife was replaced with Pokemon. And one familiar Tepig that he finds on, um, he finds in the wild had been confused and dazed from the, from the traveling and was currently trying to eat a, a squirrel, however, was missing constantly as he had never had to, you know, tackle something this small and this fast as he constantly fails until Deku shoots an arrow straight through its heart. Tepic looks back up to him, you know, shocked and like, how could you do that? He's like, uh, don't overreact to me, Tempig. It, was it, was, it wasn't another Pokemon, it was just a regular ass squirrel. As Tepig's like, uh, still. <laughs> He's like, calm down. Uh, this world's much harsher than, you, than, than your own. Come, I'll show you. Also, it's so good to see you. As they wrap hands around each other's, uh, each other's shoulders, and start walking off. As Tepig start, um, as when he touches the shoulder of Tepig, he starts to feel something. The flames start to course through um, Deku's arms. As their, as their arms were wrapped around their shoulders, it starts to connect through their shoulders, wrapping around their, uh, uh, wrapping around Deku's neck, and up to his, up to his ears. As Deku then he, um, then sees, you know, Tepig level level one. What the hell? What is this screen? As he holds up his hand to the front of it, as uh, as he taps on it, uh, Arceus like, don't touch that. He says, Arceus. She he's, <laughs> she says, yes. Sorry, I, I didn't want to explain this so soon. I'd been trapped inside of you. What? Remember when I said there was a mistake? Yeah, I didn't have enough strength to go back to my own world. Oh, this is such a mistake. Don't worry. All the Pokemon are here. Can't you just take... My power depends on the Pokemon. It'll take another, what, 100 years before I get to go back to my own world. For right now, I can give you some, po some power. Something that I had planned to give you anyways, but... If I didn't do this, well, I could have had enough strength to go to my own world. Oh, uh, 
I see. Yeah. Well, thank you anyways. W what does it even mean? Oh, that's right. It's actually pretty cool. Basically, you're able to connect to all the Pokemon in this world. All the people here are also born from the Pokemon in this world. All their powers and quirks are enhanced by it. Basically, all of them are enhancements of... All humans are enhancements of Pokemon. All their elemental stuff and, you know, just general different quirks are now based on Pokemon. The more friendly that you get with Pokemon, the more powers that you gain from them. And now, if you get that power up to maybe level 3, well, you'll be able to use the full power, the full choice of it. Right now, you're only level 1 with, te with Tepic, which means you can only really give out a small flame with your mouth, maybe. And that power will go away the farther you get away from him. Oh, so what about you, Arcadius? Well, my power is the system. The system? That's what I call it, at least. I'll always be around now, so you'll never be alone again, Deku. <sighs> Thank you for all of this, Arceus. Of course, Deku. I would never leave you alone. Thank you so much for watching. I'm actually really excited for this one. Um, so I guess I'll see you guys sometime, somewhere. Goodbye. Goodbye.